Deepa, every year I have to do this online training program that tries to teach me diversity at workplace, more women at workplace. Do I really need it every year? I think you do, Bhagwan, because uh, you know there are there are biases that keep us from promoting diversity at the workplace. And training essentially assumes that it takes more than good intentions to change biased behavior. And training is important, I think. Okay, so you think I am biased, even though I say no, I am not. So there is this uh, this great example, Joelle Emerson, diversity consultant. She walks into several tech workplaces and she does this exercise. Uh, round one of the exercise, she flashes a series of words on the screen and she asks people to raise their right hand if the word is male and their left hand if the word is female. And people do this fairly easily because you, you'll have aunt, uncle, mother, father, flash and you do this. Uh, in the second round, what she does is she flashes again a series of words that pertains to either liberal arts or science and she repeats the exercise. People do it again easily. Physics, history, you raise yeah. your hand. In round three, she asks you to make associations. So she says, raise your left hand if the word is liberal arts or female, female. right if it's male or science. science. You can imagine people do this very easily. Fine. You know where I'm going with this. In the, in the last round comes a revelatory moment where she says, raise your right hand if the word is liberal arts or male and your left if it is science or female. And people have People's brains ideas. don't go there. Whatever your training, whatever your belief system, their brains are much slower to go there and make the association between women and science. Okay. And uh, so that's an example of an unconscious bias, which if you're made aware of, at least there is this pause between your intuition and your judgment, right? So it helps. Okay, but is that enough? A great question and you know the answer because it's a rhetorical question. It's never enough uh, and it's especially not enough in certain areas and businesses like for instance if you take the field of computer science, if I ask you you know what makes a person a good computer scientist, most people would say uh, genius. Yeah. Right? They wouldn't say the same thing of lawyers and accountants because they believe that's a skill that can be taught. Learned. Yes. And in those fields where performance is attributed to innate genius, women are hugely underrepresented. Physics, philosophy, computer science, guess why? Because of the stubborn hypothesis that genius is a male trait. Even though the evidence suggests it's not true because we know at UC Berkeley last couple of years in the first year, freshmen, there were more women who were enrolled in computer science. And this is also about doing well, right? So this yeah. is also about, so even if you, the enrollments are there, but in terms of, you know, moving up the ladder, in terms of uh, succeeding, that school of research as well, right? Which shows that you don't scale the ladder quite so, and you're underrepresented because of this reason. Graduates are the same, but working professionals, not there. Inventors, not there. Progress, not there. These are some of the assumptions that holds we minorities. Just go ahead and hire more women. Should we just do it? Is that what you're saying? What do you think? I'm curious. So you, I'm curious about why you even think diversity is important. And then, you know, what you're essentially saying is don't just talk about it. Just Go out and it. hire more women. Because I think there is evidence. I think there is evidence which suggests that, you know, when there are more women on boards, for example, they bring a diverse perspective yes. and outcomes improve. And there is other evidence from workplace. The study that you're talking about points to about five distinctive capabilities that don't come to the board when those women are replaced by men. So, you know, there is clearly a set of unique capabilities that women bring in. And some of the capabilities, they talk about R&D, for instance, improves significantly, right? And that's because they think differently, the construals are different, the capabilities are different. And therefore, this evidence that you're talking about is consistent with other outcomes that improve, like innovation. Creativity, innovation, yes. and so on. Yes. Okay. But I do have one concern. So I have many friends in the startup field, and they tell me that, oh, we would love to hire more women young women but that comes with a penalty because young women are in the childbearing ages they get married and then they disappear for a year or two and we can't afford to lose that productivity i'm glad we are discussing you know these kinds of tough questions bhagwan uh, but i think this is a great example of how what we think about men and women is very flawed right there is research which shows that 
it's not that men and women have different desires and challenges about work or family life balance. They, they have don't. very similar desires and they face similar challenges. Okay. But it is how their different experiences at the workplace once they have children that puts them in very different positions. And in turn, it's what organizations assume that they want after the children are born that puts them in very different. So they expect workplace. different things from men and women. The beliefs are different. The assumptions are different, right? They assume that when a man has had a child, he's going to come back to work swiftly and as, as aggressively as he did earlier. And therefore, if he asks for time off or a lighter travel schedule, he is granted it very grudgingly and is sometimes even asked in a metaphorical sense, man up and get back to work, right? And it's, I, I know it's, it's a bad term, but you know, that's the expectation. And, and when the woman asks for it? Women, the expectation is that you're going to rush it back at ah. work. You want less at this point and therefore you're given the less taxing opportunities which also read as less high status or high career or high growth opportunities. It uh, sets, sets them behind. Yeah, so, so organizations are not actually helping them by saying, yeah. oh, we'll be more sensitive to women by giving them time off work. In fact, the opposite might be also true. Men may want to say, I want to spend more time at home. And women may say, I want to come back to work earlier. So you're saying we need to... I, I'm saying it needs to be in, in, in dialogue, right? So you need yeah. to have a unique understanding of what that person wants. So and make no assumptions. Make no assumptions. You know, you should some not... Some women will say, I want to stay at home. Others women will not. Correct. Similarly, some men would say, I want to come back to work. Others may say, I don't want to. I want to spend time. Don't give them systematically different experiences in terms of lower growth jobs, lower opportunity jobs. Uh, don't do that, right? Absent evidence and absent conversation. I think it's important to revisit these average pervasive beliefs to drive more idiosyncratic ones. So we need to do more than just talk. Don't talk about diversity, just do it. I'm saying shift the onus to organizations to change the circumstances that lead to different behaviors, to create workplaces that challenge these assumptions. Negotiation is an example, right? Uh, you're asked, you know, they say, oh, women don't ask, women are poor negotiators. No, women are just embedded in different networks in the organization that keep them bereft of the information that is needed to negotiate well. In that sense, it's not dispositional. Yeah. So don't assume it's dispositional. Don't assume women and men have, are systematically different in dispositions, uh, but rather assume that there are different circumstances and experiences at work that lead them to behave differently. So Sheryl Sandberg wrote this book called Lean In. You are saying, in fact, we should tell the organizations to change their assumptions so that the women don't have to lean in. Yes, and don't assume they're not leaning in. And don't assume they're not leaning in. Yes. Okay. Yes. So talk about it, do it, but also change the assumptions about what men and women want. Yes. Don't just talk about it, do it, but do it while changing your assumptions and beliefs about what men and women want and changing your workplaces so you can change the circumstances that lead to different behaviors and not just the different behaviors. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's true that if you are highly skilled, then these technologies, when you combine it, increase your wages much faster. Mm. So even though wages at the lower level are also increasing, but they are increasing at a much smaller Correct. rate. Correct. So the wage discrepancy between haves and have-nots is increasing. Correct. But you know what? I don't care about inequality. Mm.